welcome Nora Ames to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. How's Thank it going? Thank you for having me. How's everything with your new channel? I'm loving every single video oh. that you put out. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it's going great. I mean, I think, you know, uh, one can only hope. Uh, I mean, I'm getting tremendously positive feedback. So that's really nice. Um, you know, uh, there's a couple of people that, uh, you know, I mean, there's always people who want to give me um, important feedback uh, on what I'm saying. And I try to take all the feedback that I'm getting, um, you know, I, you know, I recorded at the car wash, probably not the best idea. The other day I just had time. It was very loud. Okay. You know, it was very loud. Um, but I was excited. Uh, you know, I'm an excitable person, but I mean, you know, I, I have very small windows of time and I try to just keep my, my chit chat real talk, um, about my feelings and the stories that happened, um, in my life and the nuggets of truth that I have to share about Scientology and, um, you know, why it is a, uh, trash heap garbage dumpster fire that you should stay away from, uh, in, in no uncertain terms. Um, but trying to pepper all of the um, awfulness about it with, you know, what I have, you know, what people have told me is my own brand of humor uh, throughout my life, just trying to deliver that in the way that I know best, um, which is, you know, uh, realness and and love and laughter, you know, so I think it's going pretty well. Uh, you know, if, if when I can sit in my house and record with my fancy ring light and stuff, that's fun. Uh, but I also try to, you know, dedicate as much of my free time um, as I can to living life, you know, because that's important. <laughs> <laughs> and something that yeah. you weren't able to do effectively oh and God. properly in the Sea Organization. No. And just, you know, when you're dedicating your life to, you know, uh, clearing this universe of evil, uh, you don't have a life because that's that's forbidden. That's verboten, as they say in, in, in Deutsch, uh, you know, in German. So, yeah, you cannot, um, you, you can't even have a thought about that. That's an actual crime, yeah. as we both know. Um, thought um so uh yeah um so you know learning to not think that and live life and even enjoy uh minor thoughts about things that uh you know wander is is a is a new practice you know and that's okay too because it, you know i mean it's not just i mean i'm not going away after this month because i know that it's just like oh i wonder where you know what's going to happen to nora after pride month you know it's like we fly the flag for one month and then it's like okay everyone let's just get back to business and the gays are you know uh, gone after that. And it's like, you know, we don't stop being gay after June. Um, it, we're gay every day. Wait, you, you don't? Know, it's not, no, it's oh my month? God. Oh, the closet, oh. it's right behind me and we just go back in it. <laughs> go back um, in. <laughs> just, yeah, we get heterosexual partners and we're just like, oh, that was fun. Yay for June. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, I took 40 years to come out of that closet and trust I'm never climbing back in there. Um, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's, and I know, and that's, it, it's interesting because that's definitely some of the feedback that I've gotten. It's like, hey, the rainbow's fun, but you know, we could just, you know, why do we have to have the rainbow all the time? And I know the rainbow is a hot topic right now and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's very woke and like people like to throw this woke word around and people should really, uh, as a former word clearer, people should really like, uh, number one, uh do some deep dive on the kind of derivation of the word woke once again we are usurping um aave language because we just love to take everything that black people put out there and just be like oh i'm gonna put that in my pocket and just start using that like we just have to stop doing that um because now we've ruined it like once again white people we've ruined woke um and just weaponized it and and made it something that absolutely it was not um you know uh so yeah um and uh yeah i could do like a whole lecture about that but yeah. it, it's just um there's nothing wrong with woke or not woke and, and all these other things and the rainbow christians you can still have the rainbow no one has stolen it from you personally and i had this discussion literally with my kids in the car um about specifically the, the rainbow and the lgbtq uh ia 
plus, and there's so many letters now, uh, forgive me for the rest of the letters that I've left out. I'll just put a plus there. I know there are many more letters now um, and that I am leaving out and I, and I, I apologize for, it's S-I-A, I think, and an O. I think I'm but, leaving out. But that's what but, the plus is for. The plus right. is you capture any that you I know, but I don't want them or... to feel insulted like I'm leaving them out because everyone is like, hey, what about us? And I I I, I do respect um Ace and Arrow and and other and I I know I'm leaving off people. So I don't want you to feel disrespected. Um but that is what the plus is for, you know, and it's like, you could just put like L and then just put a plus and then it's like, what about lesbians, you know, like, <laughs> hey, you know, like, uh, because I'm a lesbian, I'm just owning it. But you know, whatever. Um, you know, whatever, everybody could put themselves first and then just put a plus after it and then just be done with it. But then that's, you know, we don't want to start a turf war here on the gay rainbow. But yeah. the discussion I was having with the kids is as a child, I said, I'll be honest, I always because I was being shoved in a girly box that I never quite felt that I fit in. Um, I hated rainbows. Like I, I hated them because it was like, we were forced to draw them a lot as a kid. And I was not good at making perfect arches and like, I was never good at drawing in the lines. Um, and things like that. So it was frustrating. And I found it to be uh, just an annoying thing. And now I'm a part of a rainbow. And so now it's like, I'm forced to be a part of this color scheme that I'm like, okay. But for me, I'm just the way I look at it. And this is what I told my kids. I, you know, I have, uh, you know, at least one kid who's walked out of their own closet and has declared themselves to be attracted to uh, same sex partners and has also said they're non-binary and ace and they're slapping labels on like they're a NASCAR driver at age 14. <laughs> and I said, okay, we got to slow your roll a little bit, you know, before you do too many things, but all right, I'm, I'm learning because there's things I didn't know about when I was a kid, you're just gay or straight. And then if you're the gay, you were just boy, boy and girl, girl. And that was, it was very simple. And now there's a so many things and i'm still learning stuff every day i'm learning something new so you know uh i'm evolving too because i'm gen x so every generation has new things um but for me the way i look at it in any rainbow straight gay whatever as long as it's two or you know if it's polyamory more consenting adult humans uh that are participating and whatever they're participating in in their bedroom i don't care does it mean it's my bag of chips absolutely not but if i learn about it and i say hmm, okay that's not for me but it's for you fantastic and that's the end of it that's how much i think about it do you know what i mean like i could learn about a new thing and go oh that's what that is very interesting no thank you for me but that's fine. As long as it honestly doesn't involve children or animals, I don't care personally. And that's how I feel like everybody else should think about it. I don't think about what's in someone's pants or in, underneath their clothes, um, unless it's my wife, because like, I love her and I'm very interested in her. Um, Good, as I you think should about, be. <laughs> I think about that a lot, probably more than I should, honest, frankly, but that's just me because I'm madly in love with her. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, um, other than that, it's none of anybody's business. And that's how it should be. It's like, that's it. If everybody just like was like, oh, that's a thing. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. The end. And then, then move on with your life. And then who cares? It's like, why are we spending all this time, honestly, in, in any religion, in any faction of politics or anything else, worried about what somebody else wants to do. We're not worried about Kardashians who have completely changed their complexion and altered their face and started beauty lines, altering the course of every young woman in the entire world's beauty standards for themselves and cause body dysmorphia across the entire planet and white people thinking they become black people okay that's okay but people who are born and wake up and go oh shit, i'm in the wrong body 
I am, I am not this, I am that, and I need to be my true self. And we're worried that that's causing the rest of the world harm because a, an individual person is making a decision for themselves. That's bonker doodles. That's what I don't understand. But we have religion over here telling everybody you can't make a decision for yourself. Yet we have politics saying be individualistic and capitalism saying be individualistic, which is effing everybody up. So this is what I don't understand. And then you have things like Scientology that come in and tell you you're an immortal spiritual being who's been here forever, eternal, in a teeny tiny body. But you cannot be the gay. You cannot be anything but focused on you know, clearing this planet with this technology. And if you do anything else but that, you are harming everyone in the universe. Yeah, I think the key thing with this is it's freedom and choice, right? Like you said earlier, if someone identifies as whatever and you learn about it and you go, great, that's great for you, not for me that person should have the freedom and the ability to go and live life as that. A hundred percent. And that should be a thing. And when it comes to Scientology and other um, hate groups, um, they take away that freedom. They stop people being Absolutely. able to identify however they want. Absolutely. And that's where I have the problem. You don't have to agree with the label or identify as it yourself, but you have to allow other people to live however they want to live and live as who they are. Right. And that's what 100%. pisses me off to, to use. And I right. think, you know, whatever it, like I said, as long as you are living your life in a way that you are in a consensual situation that is bringing you happiness and you are not harming those around you with that consensual happiness, that's fine. You're not doing anything wrong. Right. Um, there is 0% chance of my marriage to my wife harming my neighbors, right? Because we are married, we are living our lives, we're raising our children. It has nothing to do with my neighbors in my neighborhood. Um, us feeding our children, clothing our children has nothing to do with the people around us, right? We are just living our lives. But somehow that act has gotten twisted to people thinking like that we are married then equals somehow their marriage is now not the same. Their marriage is now less because my wife and I have allowed been allowed to be married because we get the same rings and we get the same ceremony. Then now their ceremony is somehow deemed less. And I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand that like because we got married and we made vows to each other to love and respect each other and be together and we filed the same paperwork in the county um and we get to be have the same rights in a in a doctor's office and are share the same last name and everything that somehow um my neighbor who's married now their marriage is somehow legally less like it doesn't make any sense if i were a man if i'd been born a man and i loved my wife the same amount it, it doesn't make that any less right so it's not it doesn't none of it makes any sense it's just like it just means you can't like allow other people happiness because you don't want to do that thing right it's the same way that people look at like people who are in polyamorous relationships like or or a thruple as an example people are like oh that's that's wrong that's ridiculous now for example this is a subject like for me personally would i have a third person in my relationship absolutely the fuck not no but um, because I, I couldn't give myself to two people at once a, and I would be like, I'm the type of person where if someone else was with my wife in that way, I would just be like, like karate chop. Like that's yeah. just not for me. However, I have met people who are in successful relationships like that. And I look at them and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I, I don't personally understand it. 
but I'm happy for you guys. Like, that's awesome. Like, I love how that works. And as a mom of four people, I'm thinking to myself, more parents, this makes sense. Like, I could see how this would be like useful in that type of situation, but I couldn't do it for me personally. But like, thumbs up for you guys. Like, if it's working for you and it's awesome, I, you continue. I'm not going to say you can't have that because I don't like it. And so that's what people need to wrap their mind around is that just because I don't want something personally doesn't mean somebody else can't have it. It's like, I don't like, uh, you know, mayonnaise on things. Does that mean mayonnaise is canceled around the whole world? Like a lot of people well, think now that's you nuts, said it, I don't like be. mayonnaise. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, I like yeah. spicy mustard. What if everybody else didn't like spicy mustard? It's like, you can't, you know, I mean, my mom hates mushrooms. She, she fucking won't eat mushrooms on anything. So should mushrooms just not exist around the world because my mother doesn't like mushroom? You know what I mean? Like, that's just dumb. That's just stupid. But that's how people look at sexuality. It's just, you can't be like, well, no mushrooms. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, can you imagine can you imagine if there was just like an overlord that was like, well, jelly beans are done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's mad. I think I'm on a bit of a mission here because I am a big supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. And I have a lot of I friends that, that fall into that category. And I, I'm on a mission because, um, I don't like the word ally, but I get it right. I'm an ally. I like, I am fighting the fight with you guys mm -hmm. and as a straight cis white male like i fall into the category of the type of person who is causing most of the problems here right <laughs> and so i'm kind of like what can i do well it would be more like... it'd be more effective if you're a woman i'll be honest with you alex if you're a straight cis white woman because that's even more than the white men i'll be sure. honest yeah but carry on <laughs> but yeah i think for me I'm on, I'm on a bit of a mission and i've realized that um there is knowledge out there that you can't yeah. be the gay in scientology oh 100 um, but i don't think that the public have made the connection between scientology and its anti-gay rhetoric mm. um making it therefore a gay hate group like it is a oh, hate group right it's 100 percent a hate group i'm on this mission to really um make that a bit of a focus and something that people are aware of because yeah when you actually look at what Aaron hubbard says and teaches and and wrote it is so mm -hmm. clear it's not just a it's looked down upon like in dianetics the first book in scientology yeah. that is meant to be the most important one that's all based off um yeah he literally says a, a ho someone who's homosexual or lesbian or falls into that category is a sexual pervert and that it is a mental illness yeah and that needs to be cured a hundred percent. I mean, like, well, that was, um, you know, when, when Leah launched her show, um, after the first two episodes, I reached out to Leah personally. Um, and I basically was like, Leah, listen, your show is everything. I am so unbelievably proud of your show. This is just like, I can't even believe what I'm seeing on screen right now because it, you know, I mean, there'd been other documentaries, like when going clear came out, uh, the documentary, um, when that, when the book came out, I read it. When the movie came out, I thought maybe they'll expand on it um, and do some more stuff, right? Like, cause you know, books, movies, slightly different. So when the movie came out, um, I saw it at LACMA um, with my mom. My mom was finally out of Scientology at that time. And um, Going Clear was part of the reason she got out. And uh, I had to read it and a lot of other stuff happened, but I was like an insurgent in my own home for over a decade, like getting my mom out with like little bits and pieces of data. But um, we saw that movie together in LACMA in a screening with um, Lawrence there in this, in the, and Alex Gibney, they were both there for the screening. And um, there's a scene in the, in the, in the movie where they go over uh, the billionaire contract, right? And the contract comes up and they're talking about it. Now you have to realize at, at LACMA, it's the, you know, it's like the arts place there in Los Angeles. So there's all this Hollywood bigwigs and a lot of Hollywood actors were like invited um, to come see this film. So when this scene comes up, they're talking about like Mike Rinder and all these other guys who had joined the Sea Org as children, 
okay? And being presented with this billion-year contract, right? And they're showing the actual contract. People started laughing in the theater, like actual laughter. And I, I now it's a dark theater. I started turning like red and I got heated and I got, I got upset. Like I had a visceral reaction to that. And I started crying. I was, I was embarrassed and livid and upset. And I wanted to scream at this audience, like, fuck you. Like, fuck you for laughing. Like that's, that's my real fucking life. Like, like, how dare you think this is a joke? Like, like, first of all, we took that so fucking seriously. Like this is real. And you think this is a joke? Like this is like pretend like, oh, oh, we're just so ridiculous for believing that we were committing ourselves for a billion years. Like, like, you know, this isn't a joke. I you think know? people, when they see it and, out of context with no um, experience of Scientology, they're like, oh, that's like, come on, that's crazy. Signing a billion year contract. Oh, ha, right. ha. But actually, no, think about the state of mind you have to be in. For you to sign that, that means you genuinely believe with your heart and your soul and everything, every ounce of your body, you believe yeah. that this is the way to help people and this is what you're going to do in this life and you're going to come and back. You're and you're dedicated. And we when were you've got serious. that state of mind, it's, it's horrible. We were dedicating ourselves for a billion. I was serious about that. I took that commitment very seriously that I was going to come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime for that cause, for Scientology, for my religion that I was completely dedicated to. That was not, you know, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. That's how much I was like, because I'm an eternal being, what's a billion years? Who cares? I've probably been live longer than that anyway. Exactly. It's a blink. It's a blink. It's a boop. So who cares? Yeah. Right. So whatever. Um, but that laughter got me. So I actually talked to Alex Gibney and Lawrence Wright afterwards. And I said, Hey, Alex, like the movie's great. Thank you for making it. However, like, where's the second generation stories? where's the rpf where's like my story like you didn't cover anything about gay not like what's up why is this so what the fuck and he basically looked at me and goes like why don't you do it like why don't i do it like you're fucking professional movie man. what the f hello like who am i i'm no you're alex gibney like you didn't talk to me uh you could have called me like i've been posting you I was so mad. Like, and Lawrence Wright basically said the same thing. I'm like, you didn't talk to me for your book? Like, I mean, I understand that I, you know, I'm not some big celebrity and I'm not fucking Mike Rinder and blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, there's, there's a lot more. There's thousands of us second gen people who have stories that, you know, there's a lot of shit that went down. Where's, where's the rest of it? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, and I'm like, you know, you touched like this much of what's going on. Um, I mean, it's still a very impactful book. There's not, there's no cutting around that, um, you know, kind of a situation. So then when Leah came out with her show, I thought, finally, we're going to get some like hard hitting shit going on here. Like we're going to get some stories out there. We're going to get like, oh my God, this was amazing. So after the second episode, I contacted her and I was like, anything you need, like you tell me what you need. I want to help you with this. What can I do? So she said, I need you to make a video about what happens when you're gay in Scientology. And I was like, done. So that's actually the first video that's on my channel um, where I did like a very in-depth. Um, it was actually a lot longer. She was like, you need to cut it down to like five minutes. <laughs> it's like 17 because I couldn't. Because she wanted me to put in all of the Scientology in there. So there's like cuts from actual Scientology videos and things like that in there and the bridge and stuff um, and Dianetics like we're talking about um, in there. Um, very, very well edited um, by both me and uh, my ex-husband, Cameron. Um, so, uh, you know, it's very, very professional and things like that. So it, 
it's it, in no uncertain terms they are massively against um the gay uh and it's not like my personal opinion it's not just about what i went through personally like they just didn't like me because i'm too boisterous i'm too loud i'm too wild um you know it it, it their their teachings elron's words um specifically state this i mean he was excruciatingly homophobic um in in whether or not we can dis dismiss this by saying you know he grew up at a different time he's from the 20s he's from you know the early 1900s and blah 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 like i don't really care like the man was disgustingly homophobic he taught thousands of people um that who they are internally is wrong and demonic and that they should not exist on planet earth and that's those are just facts um and they have never uh changed the teachings uh to reflect current times they you know um have tripled down on it and have funded multiple anti-gay measures and have backed anti-gay candidates uh all across the country so that's that's just what they do and it it doesn't make sense when you think about it well i'm going to do something here that you don't do in scientology i'm going to try and apply logic right um, <laughs> what i know steady on <laughs> steady on um <laughs> if you're a spiritual being if you're a thetan right that doesn't right. have a body right and you just pick up a body and then you drop the body and you pick up another one right right and um, a spirit therefore inherently doesn't have a gender right right a spirit is correct non-gender right it's correct it's nothing so one lifetime you could pick up a body and it could be male and the next lifetime it could pick up a female body so actually you would think with logic that therefore that would indicate that you can be trans non-binary gay by whatever because actually you as a spiritual being will be attracted to another spiritual being and none of that should come into play but that's not how the church view it at all. So I'm smirking because Elron covers this in a lecture. He jokes about this very thing during the Freedom Congress. Um, so he says, you know, you're going down the line. I'm almost quoting him here because I was forced to listen to this lecture, I don't know, like a hundred times when the gay was being audited out of me. And he says, you're going down the line here, cloppity clop, and you're a man and and then one day you wake up and you're a woman. And what are you supposed to do? Learn to cook? Um, yeah. I've never heard this lecture. I'm going to need to. Go oh, no, it's on the Freedom anyway. Congress. I think if you open up like the Freedom Congress tapes, it's like the bottom left hand one. I'm trying to remember if I can remember or if somebody out there can find the Freedom Congress one. But yeah, he's he's basically like, yeah, so what you're supposed to do, basically in the lecture, he talks about that this can happen, that you will, you know, be going along always being born a man or a woman. And then at some point, uh oh, hot dog, you get in the like the wrong body. And so at that point, you just kind of like got to grin and bear it. And, you know, and then next time, it'll work out for you. Um, so yes, that can happen, but ultimately you're a bigger being and it'll be okay because, you know, so, so that explains sometimes when you see like kind of masculine chicks and kind of feminine guys, because they just kind of like, whoops, because you're supposed to be so at cause that you're like just hovering around the hospital. There you are, like like a ghosty ghost, like you know, and then just waiting in the hospital to be like, is that a penis or is it a vagina? Oh, vagina! Oh, well, that's for me. Uh, and then just like pick pick and choose a body, because according to Scientology, you are like get the body at the moment 
of like birth. So like Scientologists will be like, oh yes, like I used to have conversations with you, you know, before you were born. I remember you just hanging out and you would be there, you know, just being there with me. And I just remember you were such a theta potato even before you would just be a spirit and we would just talk and it was just so great. Oh my God. Like, I, I mean, like after my father passed, um, first of all, guys, like Scientologists say just the stupidest shit. Like when my father passed, I had several OTs tell me that, oh my God, I was exterior to like the whole universe during a session and I saw your father and, you know, he just wants to say that he's so proud of you and he misses you and you remember me. And then I had another person tell me like, I believe I know I've located your father. He's been reincarnated with a new family. They just say to BB and um, his name is Connor. And he, 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 he. like the, like the fifth time one of these OTs came to me and they were like, I was on Mars and I was exterior <laughs> and um, your father wants you to know. I was like, listen, the next time you see my father, you tell him, I said, fuck you. And if he wants to come talk to me, he can talk to me his damn self. Okay. Because he's supposedly OT also. Okay. And I'm a Sea Org member. You can address me as sir and he can come talk to me. All right. And this lady was like, Oh my God, that is just not okay. I was like, you can write me up. Like, I don't care. Like, don't come tell me some message from my dad from that like other side, like piss off. Like I'm not in the mood. Like if this man wants to send me a message, like fucking write it on the mirror in some steam, like a ghost should or some shit. Like, I don't want to hear about it. Like piss off. Like that's bullshit. I was so mad, but they just say dumb stuff. Like, oh, like in, in the, the concept, like just, I mean, as a Scientologist, like the concept that we purposely picked this body with these two fucking morons as our parents is just really annoying. Like, are you kidding me? Like if I, this is the, this is the fate I gave myself. Are you kidding? Like for realsies, like, you know, I've gone through some therapy and I've worked on a lot of stuff, but if I purposely picked my father, although good looking, charming, fun, but that man was a con man, could not keep a job, lost all our money, just completely unreliable, bad heart, bad diet, died at 45 of a massive heart attack. Like talk about abandoning your family. And my mom, a lot of stuff to work out. We're still working on our relationship. Nice lady doing some good stuff, both chain smokers, like in a cult. Why would I do that? Why? Why did I do that? That's not good choices. What if what? Hi? Hello? It's no. Nora. It's Bad because choices. it's because you're the gay. You're a degraded being. Oh, and then I picked a homophobic guy. What? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? What was it like for you? Growing up in Scientology as someone that identifies now as gay, because I know you've told your story before and so yeah. on, but I want to focus specifically on this because yeah, it's, it's a very important topic. And I think I want to get that point across to people. What, what mm. that journey was like for you emotionally and mentally, because you have to come to terms with being who you are and coming out of the closet and all this sort of stuff. Like, yeah. every, like people do that, but then couple on top of that, the suppression and the shame and the guilt that Scientology, mm. it must've been really tough for you. Well, I think it was tough for two reasons. A, um, and I try to remind my kids of this, like every day, it generationally, it was a hard time period because I grew up, um, in the eighties, early throughout the entire eighties and nineties, early nineties. Right. So that was like my coming of age time. Cause I was born in 1976. So that time period, everyone has to understand. Cause you got to rewind the clock. I, you know, being gay now is like a, a fucking glee episode. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's very different. Um, my growing up, there were no gay icons everywhere. Um, we did not have gay characters on every single television show um, in there to look at and go like, oh, it's it's normal. Gay is everywhere, 
right? If there were a gay character somewhere, they were the butt of all the jokes or they were being murdered um, or they were the bad guy. These were the three choices, right? Or they were a prostitute. Okay. What a great um, representation oh, for this community. Right. Yay. Let's be gay. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it was, it was definitely forbidden. It was bad. Um, you know, so it wasn't, um, like now where it's, it's normal. Um, characters on shows are seen as parents, they're doctors, they're lawyers. Um, they're just a neighbor, they're a friend. Um, they're also shown in, in all walks of life. Um, you know, and then we've had shows like Glee, we've had, um, you know, Euphoria, we've got shows that show gayness in all its form, the L word, queers folk, um, you know, all these different things that are showing the good and the bad, um, even orange is the new black, um, all these different things, right. That have shown, uh, you know, um, pose, uh, all of these things that are showing many different sides of queerness, gayness, and everything else. And all of the things in between we've had RuPaul's drag show, uh, you know, everything, right. Um, where we're getting a myriad of of gayness and uh it's fabulous it's it's really fabulous um to see that we've seen so many different versions of coming out stories um and all of that um you know which has also been great um you know uh the the great show faking it if nobody ever saw that that was actually part of my coming out story like I, ironically i'm watching a show about a teenage girl who pretends that she's her best friend's girlfriend so that her best friend can like be popular and then realizes on her own journey that she's gay and i was like uh oh hot dog i better start coming out of the closet <laughs> like watching this show right um so uh yeah but when i was an actual kid um, you know, like things for me were just very confusing. Um, you know, in my household, you know, my mom kind of gave me quasi free reign to do things that I wanted within reason, you know, like I, you know, there's always that you got to wear dresses, you got to put on the patent leather shoes. And then both my grandmothers wanted me to go to church that we didn't believe in Episcopalian on one side and Seventh-day Adventist on the other. So I'm going to these weird Christian things um, on weekends and holidays that I have no idea what that's about. Um, and then, you know, kind of doing Scientology in and out for a bit as a child and learning about Elron and my dad always trying to like give me weird sauce auditing on the side to find out about my past lives because he was convinced I was super OT as a kid. Um, but like I wanted to be my dad as a kid. So I would stand with him and like pretend to shave my face. And like I was always doing like what's considered boy stuff, you know, wearing pants and just like running around and scuffing my knees and riding, you know, like wanting a BMX trick bike and like, you know, trying to cut my hair all short all the time. And like my mom never wanting me to do that, you know? Um, and so like the things that I fought hard for, um, were really hard because it would get squashed a lot, you know, especially in the eighties, because I grew up at a time where people were always asking me, like, are you a boy or a girl? And I did not develop as they like to say, you do develop. Um, I was a late bloomer. I didn't hit puberty until I was like 14 and a half, which is my freshman year in high school. So that question, are you a boy or a girl was asked of me like all through middle school. Um, although I'd had boyfriends and stuff. So I would like force myself into these situations where I would be like, okay, well, I'm just going to go kiss this boy. And so I became like, uh, you know, curious about uh doing things and although it was like more like to get the attention of my friends who were girls and be like them who they had boyfriends and so i wanted to like be close to them and hang out with them so they would be like oh you should hang out with or get this guy to be your boyfriend because that's my boyfriend's best friend and so it was a way to be like them and then we could all talk more, but really, you know, I was thinking about them, you know, and just sort of like trying to, you know, trying to fit in, I'm, right? 
trying to fit in. And, you know, I mean, I was dressing more like my boyfriends than I was like my girlfriends and all of my, my girlfriends used to always say like, you know, like I remember in middle school, especially my girlfriends would always say, you know, Nora, if you were a guy, you'd be the perfect boyfriend because like, I'd always be doing stuff for them. Like I'd remember their birthdays and if they were sad, I would like, you know, um, you know, just be doing like all the stuff that boyfriends should be doing basically like, you know, I'd be there for them. And, you know, the same thing in high school, like if, if they needed something, I was the person they could call in the middle of the night and like go and get them and, you know, rescue them from things. And, you know, I would care like way too much, um, about my girlfriends. And I just remember like when we had to go in PE, you know, everything being very awkward. You have to change all the time and stuff, you know, just stuff like that. And just trying to shove it down thinking, you know, oh, I'm just shy, like mm, just shy. I'm over here shy, but I'm not like everywhere else in life. I'm like, Hey, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm just kind of just very shy. Like, <laughs> And, you know, and I just couldn't talk about it because ultimately, you know, I knew how my dad felt. I knew how the rest of society felt. There were a few gay kids um, who were getting bullied relentlessly. Um, and the word gay itself was like, that was a slur, you know, like, oh, that's so gay. Oh, and, you know, people use the word fag, like, you know, and dyke as like a, as a put down. I mean, I got called a dyke, um, you know, uh, many times as, as a, as a, like a slur. So, um, it was definitely not something that I wanted to be, um, at one point, um, my, my quote unquote best friend in high school, because I went to a public school, um, we gotten into a nasty fallout over Scientology. Actually, her mom was a psychiatrist. <laughs> wow. Ironically, ironically, my best friend in high school was, uh, the daughter of a psychiatrist. My mom was not thrilled. Talk um, about a suppressive person. Right. Right. So my mom was convinced that this, this girl, Annie was an SP. And so one day, um, we had gotten into, here's, here's, here's how Annie and I had a falling out. So we were in debate class together and we had to debate rape. Okay. And we debated rape. Um, I was on the side that if you, uh, did not have consent, like, um, then it was rape. She debated the opposite. And I used a dictionary to, to like debate. I won the debate. Um, she did not win. So then she went on like a rampage against me after losing this debate and started bringing up Dianetics and Scientology a lot. Um, she knew I was a Scientologist at that time. Um, in high school, I had been declared clear. I was a last lifetime clear. It was a whole big thing. Wow. I was one of the youngest clears on the planet because I had gotten declared last lifetime clear at um, 13. And I used to wear my clear bracelet sometimes to school. Um, big mistake because people are like, is that a medical alert bracelet? Do you have diabetes? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm clear. I'm a, I'm a last lifetime clear. Look at me. Scientologist. Wow. Like, don't, don't try and explain Scientology in high school kids. That's a no. big <laughs> mistake. Yeah. I'm in a cult. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so she decided to prove to me, this was, this was her excuse when this went down, who my real friends were. So she started a rumor that I was the gay and I did not know at the time, but the principal's daughter was one of the very few, uh, very out, uh, gay people at the school. She was a lesbian and she was in a very committed relationship with one of the other very out people at the school who was a very tall, tough dyke, a butchy, butchy woman. Um, and, uh, she had, and this is how like unaware I was of my own like gayness and like how girls were looking at me who may have been gay and stuff. So she started showing up to basketball games. This is before this even happened and stuff. And she would be like, Hey, you played really well today. And I was like, Oh, thank you. Like we didn't have any classes or anything together. Um, and then, you know, I was like, Oh, I didn't even know she knew who I was like, okay, hi. You know, like I didn't, I was not aware that like that could be a thing. And I was just like, Oh, she's so nice. Like, thank you for coming to the game. That's so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so she starts this rumor and then 
um, she comes up to me and she's like, Hey, um, would you like to go to, um, Sokoko, like maybe Friday and like get a coffee and Sokoko is Sonoma County coffee company. This is like before Starbucks was a thing. So we, all the cool kids would go there to get like coffee. Cause we would, and poetry would be read. It was like a whole thing. <laughs> We're so like hip. And I was like, Oh, that would be great. So like, we would just go like hang. So I just thought it was like a hang. Like, I didn't know it was a date. And I was like, Oh yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Friday Friday night. Okay, sure. Yeah. What time? I'm like, oh, okay, seven. Sure. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, that sounds great. And so she walks off and I didn't realize this was a date. I thought we were just like, you know, go to Sokoko. Okay. Sounds like normal Friday night thing. And um, then the next thing I know, I'm just getting like stuff out of my locker and this, I get flipped around and I'm like, what is happening? And this girl's like slamming me up against the locker and she's like, reading me the riot act like how dare you steal my girlfriend from me and blah 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 and I'm like what is that what is going on I don't know what you're talking about and she's like she broke up with me because she's going out with you now and blah 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 and I was like what and she's like yeah you but you guys are going to Soko Co and blah, blah. and I'm like is that a date and she's like you know it's a date and I was like what are you talking what are you talking about wow. I'm not going out She's, and then like it's this whole thing and meanwhile a crowd has gathered and annie's there just like laughing and cackling and all these people are like nora are you gay and i'm like what what and i'm turning bright red and i'm like i'm like oh my god this, like i'm in my mind i'm freaking out i'm having a whole freak out like Two of my ex-boyfriends are now standing in this circle. <laughs> like every, so just like, I felt like everyone in the whole school was standing there. So the only thing I could think to shout in this moment is like, I like penis. Like I just started, like, <laughs> like I literally just shouted that, which wasn't true. I did not, um, never, no, I don't. Wow. Um, and then everybody's just laughing and this girl's laughing. And then that the girl was there and she was like, what do you what do you mean you're not gay and i was like i i don't i don't know what's happening right now i i apologize and then annie's like well i just wanted to you know you know you to know who your real friends were who would believe this or not and so then i had to like go around talk to people and i'm like she's like i heard that you were gay and then i did this whole, i was like okay i want to apologize to you because this person over here is i'm gonna murder her but no i am i'm not I'm, I'm so terribly sorry. And I'm, I misunderstood. Like I thought we were just going to have coffee. I didn't understand it was a date. I, I'm really sorry. Uh, I did not know you broke up with your girlfriend. So they, I'm really sorry. Uh, yeah. Like you're awesome, you know, but like, that's not, this is not a thing. You know, was, I felt so bad for her. Um, but also like, it was like a, a moment of like my heart, like just wanted to die because like, I also felt like in that moment, like, what if I am the gay and now everybody knows and like, everybody knows a secret inside of me. And like, I had to like climb back inside myself. And then like, I didn't have a boyfriend at the time. And then I was like desperate to like find a boyfriend, you know, and do something to prove that I wasn't the gay. And I feel like if that moment hadn't happened like that, you know, it could have allowed me to maybe, you know, be a little more open. Um, but that happened because, you know, she, she took advantage yeah. <laughs> of her knowledge of Scientology a little bit, you know, yeah. um, and, and a little war that we had going on, you know? Um, and then I also knew I couldn't because of what I knew about Scientology as a clear, I knew that I had to be perfect. I knew that now I had this status in Scientology, um, as the youngest clear. And if I wasn't perfect, that I was going to ruin it for the church. I was going to ruin it for my parents, for, you know, for L. Ron Hubbard, who was like watching me from Target 2. <laughs> so, so you were saddled with this guilt as well of 
Oh my god. The church's reputation on like like stand like laying or standing on your shoulders, right? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because if if I was gay in that moment, that meant that I possibly wasn't really clear. Um, that I had lied during all that auditing and everything else. Um which had cost my parents a tremendous amount of money and everything, um, you know, and also that, you know, like I was saying Scientology was a lie. I mean, nobody at the, in school knew what it meant, this this clear bracelet or anything. But, you know, like I felt like I was like this example of Scientology's perfection, you know, like I, I don't know how that could even be possible. I was so erratic and dumb as a teenager. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I was not getting great grades. I have looked at my my high school transfer, absolute trash. Um, <laughs> but like, just no, like literally awful. All of my kids have gotten fabulous grades and mine is just like awful. Like if I tried to like submit that for college now, they'd be like, um, we are a hard pass. Thank you. We, we just care. <laughs> just no, thank you. Um, yeah. but yeah, um, no, um, yeah, I was not, I was not applying myself. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I was mm. not applying that supreme beingness, um, that I was getting from the church. Um, I was so, very busy doing so sports. What, so what was it like when when you were in the Sea Org, you've committed your life to Scientology and mm. you've had this experience already and you know deep down that you're having these feelings or you've had these feelings and you're saddled with all this guilt and the trauma of being at school. What was that experience like for you, particularly in the context of being one of the most dedicated Scientologists on the planet? that's it's worse because the more you know the worse it gets like when you do as an example when you do the ptssp course right um one of the first things that you learn on the ptssp course um is like that the suppressive person basically will never acknowledge that they are like an sp right um they have all these terrible traits like it goes down like this whole list of like all the things they do and that they can never recognize any of those traits in themselves right um and if in then l ron hubbard assures you at like the end of all these ter horrible traits that you are for sure going like i do that i do that i do that i'm awful oh my god i'm an sp at the very very end he's like if you've been thinking that you are any of these things for sure you're not because an SP would never think that they are any of these things, right? And then you're like, oh, well, sigh of relief. I'm not these things. And it's like, whenever I hear about like all the traits a narcissist has, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm a narcissist. Like, ah. And then they're like, narcissists can't think that. But then one day on the PTSSP course, I was like, what if I'm the worst SP because I know all the traits of an SP and then I just secretly think about the traits. And so I'm just usurping the i'm just like broke the matrix because i know the game and so i think i'm thinking about it and therefore i'm just like well i couldn't be that because i know i'm not that and so therefore i'm not but really i am because i just thought i wasn't so is it yeah and then you just go like in a loop, right? Um, and so that that's basically Scientology in a nutshell, where you just keep breaking your brain over and over and over. And so like that's that's how it was being the gay. It's like you just are like, well, if I'm gay and I can't be the gay because it means I am literally worse than somebody who's murdered someone or someone who has evil intentions towards L. Ron Hubbard, or somebody who's stolen all the money from an org, or somebody who, you know, um, I don't know, uh, has burned down an entire forest, um, then, you know, um, uh, maybe I will just pack that up and put it away and try really, really hard to, move forward and then um if that doesn't work uh you know i don't know what i will probably have to die but if i can you know live another day and not be the gay then i'm doing something right but if i keep thinking these thoughts then 
you know, it means everything that they're saying about me is right. And every time I do something wrong, it means that those things that are everything that they say that's evil is right. And every time something goes wrong, it's my fault. So basically, like if something would were to go wrong in the area, I would be like, yeah, it's probably me. It's probably me. And so, you know, but I would try to like hope that it wouldn't, the finger wouldn't get pointed at me, but then things wouldn't totally make sense because like I would be doing a good job. My statistics would be high. And so some of it didn't make sense because it was like gays are one, one and gays are bad people and gays are evil, but everybody likes me. And like, I make people laugh and people are happy around me and people aren't sick. So like, I don't understand how I'm bad, but somehow I can't excel. So clearly something's wrong with me. Um, maybe part of it's right, you know? Um, so you start like making yourself smaller. Um, you know, it just, it, you, you stay in here and you stay just like, you stay here. You just like make yourself teeny tiny. Um, and it's really, really hard. It's really hard. And you, you get, you, you get sick yourself. Actually. Um, I was tremendously physically ill during my time in the Sea Org. It's probably a lot too for the lack of medical care and other stuff that goes on there. Um, but, but also yeah. this the stress of this situation oh. you know, is going to take a toll on your body that's a, a known thing that happens right i think i'm not surprised i think well that and the amount of physical injuries that i got too i mean yeah yeah, but yeah. that too but <laughs> but you're very much as a scientologist whether or not you have an lgbtq plus experience you are still especially if you work for the church just putting one foot in front of the other and just focusing like blinkers on just got to get through the day especially if you're a staff member or a seal member because that's the only yeah. way you can deal with the amount of shit you go through as a staff member or as a seal member because well you're you just, just focused to... on your statistic and thursday yeah. at two that's it that's your only focus is thursday at two yeah everything is for that everything and what's ironic about that is you're never ever focused on all mankind or this sector of the universe until you're at an event until you're at the big haza gaza where you know little tiny man walks up in his little big boy suit to like be like look at us look at me look at my pompadour <laughs> and like you know look at all the great things we're doing blah, blah, blah. and then you know then we're like oh we're fabulous yay and then you go back to thursday at two 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 and that's it and that's your fucking grind mm -hmm. every week and it seems like you're just like Monday, Thursday, two, where do we get done? Thursday, two, Tuesday, Thursday, two, Wednesday, Thursday, exactly. two, boom. And then you have your staff meeting on Friday to talk about what happened before Thursday, two, and then Thursday, two, oh, CSP. And then up oh, Thursday, two, Thursday, two, Thursday, two. It's just, it's just like a, it's like a train yeah. and you just are grinding it out and there's nothing. There is just nothing. And it means nothing. I mean, I, I used to tell people, what was so ridiculous and what people don't understand is like celebrity center international if we did not make on a and this is weekly this is not monthly this is not quarterly this is not yearly per week if we did not make one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per week we did not get paid that's per week and even when you did get paid it was like 50 bucks <laughs> we got paid <laughs> full pay $50, which taxes got taken out of. Okay. And then they pay you in cash, which they staple the fucking receipt to they staple your invoice to, um, which shows your taxes, your little taxes and everything. So out of $50, you would get $42 and like 57 cents. And they would tape the change to the back. Okay. So they, and they would show you the taxes cause they took the Medicare and the fucking all the stuff out. And it was the most ridiculous thing. And if we, and that was when we got full pay, sometimes we would get half pay because they would have to have sent some extra money to gold that week for some fucking event bullshit or something else. And it was a nightmare. And then 
something else would have to get cut. Oh, well, we're cutting the food budget this week. And then to feed the 400 people per month would be $2,000 to feed 400 people per month, two grand. I spend more than that on my four kids to feed they, us. They spend um, less money feeding the Sea Org than um, California spend on prison inmates food. Thank you. And it's probably better quality. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's insane. So and that, yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, I mean, we could just talk about that all day. But yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, and then when you get in trouble, it's just beans and rice. Yeah. And it's cold beans and rice. And so, so that's, that's not a joke. I mean, so it, it took me a long time to get back to Mexican food. I want to be honest. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> and, and so when you've got this situation going on. Yeah. Um, I asked this to you on your stream the other day, and I think mm. this is a good place to to me. Oh yeah, I didn't get to your question. I missed it. Yeah, no, you it. did. This this one you did answer. Um, mm. but I'm asking it to you again because you've had a bit yeah. of time to think about it, and maybe your answer is different, or maybe you want to expand on it. But I think this is maybe a good end point so that we can end on a more positive yeah. note, I suppose. Um, what would you say to someone who is currently in Scientology that is going through? this lgbtq plus journey and maybe having these doubts or whatever their situation is mm -hmm. what would you say to someone in that situation honestly i would say first of all please don't keep giving scientology your money because the the auditing and the processing a um you're not going to go fully OT. That's, that's number one, no matter what is being told to you, um, no matter what promises they've made, um, the policies and the writings of L. Ron Hubbard are not going to change the words that he wrote in Dianetics and science survival and everywhere else are the philosophy of Scientology. That is, that is what stands. That is what they believe. They believe that homosexuals, anyone in the LGBTQIA plus um, banner exists only at 1.1, that there is no other tone level for um, us, okay? So no matter what they say to your face, they believe that unless you stop being the gay, you are 1.1 and you unless you like at some point during one of these sessions that you're getting completely renounce that and decide i am the straight and i've got a straight partner and you marry a, a heterosexual partner and procreate and do that to prove it you will forever be the gay and however asterisk because you were the gay, um, that is in your folder forever. And you will never go OT. Anyway, even if you do all that, you are a, a scarlet letter in Scientology. Um, and uh, your partner will be marked, even if you did go straight. <laughs> um, and uh, they're just taking your money. They will take your money forever forever that I promise you also um I can tell you now being out of Scientology for 20 almost 20 years now um there is a glorious life and community outside of Scientology um that is plentiful and wonderful uh that exists where you can find spiritual fulfillment um that does not cost tons of money, uh, and also can give you that, uh, fill that void to need to help other people and also to find your way spiritually. Cause I do understand that. I do understand the need to understand yourself and want to discover what it is that's going on inside all of us, because I, 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 I get it. I get it. Um, but Scientology is not going to give you that pathway and they do not love you. They do not want you. Um, they do want your money and your time. Okay. But don't give them either of those things because they don't deserve it. And 
don't change for them um, because uh, it's just going to lessen who you are. That's what I would say. Thank you, Nora. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up? I thank you so much, Alex, for having me on. I appreciate this conversation so much. It's been amazing to get to talk to you. We didn't yeah. talk about you at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. That's the purpose of this video, right? And and hopefully this is the first of many, right? I would love to have more conversations yes. like this and explore this topic more deeply and talk to you more. And I think, yeah, hopefully this could be the first of many and we can, you know, carry on the fight and carry on um, raising awareness that it's it's not out ethics to be true to yourself yeah. and live life how you want to live as your true authentic self. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with you yeah. for wanting to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was going to say a hundred percent, but we're, we're stopping that. Oh, that's su <laughs> it's such a Scientology <laughs> thing. It's such, it is that literally changed my oh life. My I was God. watching and I was like, it to I say a hundred percent all the time. We have to stop that. We have to, we have to end that trend, but yeah, uh, we, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to stop saying that, but yeah. absolutely. Uh, we're, I, I, <laughs> I have to stop saying it. I say it all the time. Me too. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, crap. But yeah, no, for sure. Uh, we absolutely, I, I, I agree. I'm so happy for you spreading awareness on this. And yes, Scientology, absolutely. Uh, you know, stop pretending that you love the gays because you don't. And, and, and I encourage, my last message is, Laura Prepon, like I would love, this is my challenge. If we could get Laura Prepon, now that she has officially said she is not sitting with Scientology anymore in the cafeteria of religion, I would love, love, love for her to come on any of these channels, talk with Leah if she wants, talk with me, talk with A.A. Ron, talk with you, talk with somebody about, you know, being a paid professional lesbian on Orange is the New Black during her time as an active Scientologist, mind you, and what that was like and, you know, uh, what she has to say about that and um, how she feels about uh, supporting a hate group and what she can do to make amends now. I would love, Laura, if you're listening, we, we would love to hear from you here in the gays and, um, you know, ex Scientologists would love to know what you're going to do now to, to fight back. So that's my challenge. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Nora. <laughs>